Hey guys and welcome back to a new video. In this video you will learn how you can use Jetpack Compose and the Lazy Column to implement something like this where you have a list of items and each item has certain context actions that you can reveal by swiping. So if we swipe one of these contacts here to the right you can see that these uh, context icon buttons appear. Or we can then maybe share this item. You can see contact 6 was shared. We might be able to send an email. All that is of course just an unsimulated action here. Depending on your app you might want to uh, choose different actions of course or we might also use this to delete a contact and then it will disappear from the list. And the solution that I will show you in this video is completely customizable. So that means you don't have to use these specific context icons. Oh, you can of course choose your own icons, define your own behavior. And if you only want to use one or two of these icons, that's also completely doable. So it's a very flexible approach that I will show you here. So let's dive right into it. Empty Jetpack Compose product. We don't really need any dependencies. Compose already gives us everything we need. First things first, let's dive into our app module open our code structure and as a first thing let's just create the um, context class that represents one entry in our lazy column so i will create a new class here called contact ui make this a data class and let's say every contact has an id of type integer every contact has a name of type string and every contact has a boolean whether its options are revealed or not so is options revealed of type boolean. Then next up, well, let's create a little composable that represents one of these actions. So, whoops, not this one, like this. So composable that just shows such an icon button together with this background color. So we can distinguish these a little bit. It's not a very beautiful UI. Of course, feel free to do this differently for your project. Um, it's really, really very easy to customize this approach. So let's go to our root package, create something called an action, action icon or so, make this a file, create a composable, call this action icon, and let's now think about what types of parameters we need for this. On the one hand, we of course need an on-click lambda. So when we click on this action icon, we want to be able to react to that and respond to that. Furthermore, we would like to have a background color. Of type color here from Compose UI Graphics, we want to be able to customize the icon that we pass. So let's pass this of type image vector. And we could probably also pass a customizable tint which is optional and we can leave this at something like color white or if you have a consistent background color, you could use the um, theme color for, um, for that background color. Let's just go in here, create an icon button. On click can be set to on click. We want to pass the modifier here. So modifier and we set the background of this icon button to our background color. And then for the content, we will just create an icon together with the image vector that we've passed here. So icon. Content description, let's keep this at null. Um, normally I would also pass this. Yeah, let's do it like that. Um, let's pass a content description. I can't say normally I would stick to this best practice, but don't do it in the video. Um, so let's do this here. Content description, pass this in here. And then say we have a tint. We also assign this to our default tint, or of course the one that we passed. And that should be it for now for this action icon. But the interesting part now happens inside a new composable that we create in our root package that we call a swipeable item with actions. Because that's exactly what it is. Make this a composable swipeable item with actions. And this of course also needs a few parameters. On the one hand, a boolean, whether it's currently revealed or not. So if we um, reveal the context actions or not, we need an actions lambda. So that will be a composable lambda that lets us flexibly pass those um, items, those composables that we want to show when we reveal um, reveal these actions. And this will be an extension of row scope, be a normal lambda. So we really just get this lambda and can pass this from the outside where we just pass our one, two or three context actions or even more if you want. We then want to have a lambda when this was expanded to be able to react to that, um, oops, and when it was collapsed. Let's default this to an empty lambda since we might not need this, oops. And lastly, we need a content lambda, which is also a composable lambda, and that will be used to define the content we actually want to have for the list items. So let's think about how this now works and what the functionality behind this is. In the end, the way this works is that every single of these uh, rows where we will have our um, different icon buttons in will already be drawn by default, but we will just draw our item content on top of this box, on top of this row rather, um, so it's currently not visible. And if we then start swiping on one of these contacts like here, then we will listen to these swipe events, listen to the different um, changes in um, how far we swiped, and just use that 
to offset this composable here horizontally, so the list item. And by doing so, we automatically reveal what's drawn behind it. So let's see how this works. On the one hand, we do need a state called card with. You will um, learn in a moment what this will be used for, uh, useful for. Um, so this will be a mutable float state of 0f initially. We hit Alt Enter twice, so we import uh, these um, by remember imports. We do want to have a val offset transition. Let's just call it offset, which is equal to remember. And in here we create an animatable. Animatable, uh, this one here that takes in a float and initially, so the initial value is 0f. And lastly, at least for the variables that we declare here, we need a coroutine scope. We can get with remember coroutine scope. So let's um, talk about why we have these certain states in this animatable here. If we take a look at our device again, then the card width, which is actually rather a row width or um, context menu width that is a bit more clear, that is the width of our row that is hidden behind such an item. Because that is exactly the amount we have to offset this list item by horizontally so that the whole context menu or, or this whole actions row is visible. So we just need to keep track of this width in case it changes. This offset animatable here is then used to keep track of the current drag offset. So you can see while we're dragging, um, we of course have to update how far we offset this list item composable. And when we then release dragging here at less than half the width of our uh, context menu, then we will take this offset and animate it towards zero in this case. So to an offset of zero, so you can see it animates towards having no offset at all. And the same happens if we release the tab here after dragging for more than half the width of our context menu, then we will automatically make it snap and animate to the width of our context menu. So this is really just an animatable that we get this little animation here and it isn't just um, sticking to the left or the right. So let's dive into it. As I said, as a root composable, we simply want to have a box since with a box, we can draw multiple composables on top of each other so that one hides the, the ones drawn behind. The modifier is simply our modifier here with fill max width, and we set the height to intrinsic size dot minimum. So this will really just take a look at the um, children of this box and make sure that this box will always have the height of the composable inside that box that has the minimum height. So the uh, context menu icons here have a smaller height than this contact list item, then the whole box gets assigned the, the list of this context menu icons. Otherwise, this would look quite weird. Inside this box, we will now make use of a row, which will be our context menu. So we send a modifier of modifier done on globally positioned, which is called, well, um, whenever this composable is globally positioned, I think we could also use on size changed, because when the size of this composable changed, we can update the um, width state here for our context menu, so we keep track of it. And this works very simple, so we can just say our context menu width is equal to it, so the new size dot width dot to float. We can make sure that all the items are centered vertically in that row. And in here, we will simply put our actions composable lambda. So all the items and um, icon buttons that we pass from the outside to this composable will then be simply put inside of this row and arranged horizontally. On top of this row, we now want to draw our actual list item. But we don't just want to say content here, because then we wouldn't be able to drag anything. That is why I want to surround this content with a surface. So here in the surface, we can now put our content, but the um, surface will now be set up to support the swiping behavior. First of all, the modifier of the surface is simply a modifier. We fill the whole width of our screen of this um, parent modifier at least. Then we want to say, want to offset this by, so we say that offset and make sure to actually use this lambda variant here and not this offset that takes in a dp value because that would cause a recomposition whenever our state changes, which will happen very frequently. Um, so pretty much all the time when we're currently dragging. But with this lambda variant, this makes use of the, um, not sure if it says that here. Yes, it makes use of changing the graphics layer instead. So the actual composable bounds of our items aren't changed, but just the content that is drawn on the canvas will be moved. And that does not cause recompositions when we use this graphics layer together with this um, offset modifier. So in here, we could simply say, okay, and we need to pass some kind of int offset and the offset we want to offset the surface by is simply our offset dot round, what is it, offset dot value. So the value of our current animation state um, round to int and the y value is zero. So uh, vertically, we don't want to offset anything. And this is now equivalent to using a graphics layer and here saying, okay, the translation x, so how we move everything um, drawn on the canvas on the x axis and setting that to our offset that value. That is now equivalent, but I think I'm using this offset modifier makes this a bit more readable. And then now in order to be 
able to react to um, a drug event, we can make use of this pointer input. So we say pointer input, pass in true as a key, so we um, don't want to re-listen or re-execute this um, coroutine that is called in here, since we just want to detect horizontal drag gestures. That is what we want to do. We use this um, normal function call where we can pass in um, all those different lambdas to react to when the drag started, when the drag was ended, when there is a drag happening, so when we moved our finger a little bit. And specifically, that is what we're interested in, so on horizontal drag and when the drag ended, because then we need to take our current offset and snap it to either the, the end of our animation state or the start of it. So let's first of all have this on horizontal drag, where we can ignore the first parameter, but we're interested in the drag amount, since that is just um, how much we dragged with the current drag action. We then also want to say on drag end. So when we released our finger again. So let's now think about what we want to put in here. We want to launch a coroutine in our coroutine scope. And we now, of course, want to update our current offset. So whenever we drag by a little bit, we want to take this new drag amount difference and just add it on top of the existing amount. And we can very easily do this by saying val new offset is equal to our current offset dot value. We add this drag amount on top of that and then call dot cores in. Um, so this is a function that lets us um, specify certain constraints. So a minimum and a maximum value we want to constrain this offset to. So if we pass in zero and the actual width of our context menu, and by the way, since that is a compose state, we should actually put it here as a key. So we will um, recall these lambdas when this width changes. But what now happens here is we simply add this drag amount on top of this already existing offset. But if it's larger than our context menu width, we will assign the context menu width instead. So the maximum offset that we have to have. And if it's smaller than 0f, then we will assign 0f instead. So this way we just achieve that if we drag this, we can't drag past these two thresholds that we specify here. Um, so this would be the threshold of context menu width, and this would be the threshold of um, just 0f, so having no offset at all. Um, so we can't move this item to the left of our screen edge. And then we can take this new offset and say we have our um, offset animatable, and we snap this to the new offset. So when working with animatables, there is on the one hand snap to, and there is animate to. Snap to will simply immediately set the value of this animatable to this new value without having any sort of animation and transition. And animate to will just come with a transition. But since um, this is called very frequently and there is nothing to really animate while we are dragging, um, we will simply use snap to here. When we now end drag, we want to check when our current offset that value is greater or equal than our width, so the context menu width divided by 2f. So that means if the offset, so by how far we move this item, is larger than half the width of our um, icon row, then we want to snap this to the end, so to our context menu width. And for that, we want to now use animate to. So we want to say offset that animate to, in this case, to our context menu width. We need to put this in a coroutine scope like this. And then after that, we can call on expanded in this case. In the other case, when the offset is, you can actually use else. Um, so when the offset is less than half our context menu's width, then we also want to use this code. In this case, animate this offset to 0f and call on collapsed instead. And that's already everything, um, no, not everything we need to do here. Uh, one more little change, and that is that we currently don't use this is revealed boolean. So even if we would pass this from the outside and we would want to programmatically reveal an item without the user explicitly having to swipe or so, then we of course have to make use of that. And the way we do this is we simply have a launch effect block where we listen to changes of this is revealed boolean as well as to changes of our context menu width. And then here we simply check if this is revealed and we say, we animate our offset to our um, width, so the context menu width. And if it's not revealed, so if we switch this to false, we will animate this to 0f. And this way we cannot only control this uh, by swiping, but also by uh, changing this Boolean from uh, the outside. So let's now lastly create our little context screen that holds these items in this lazy column. They're going to our project, creating a new composable called context screen, make this a file, contact screen. We don't even need to pass a modifier in here. But on the one hand, we need a reference to the context. 
since we want to show a toast inside our uh, lambdas later on when we click on one of these context icons and we do need a list of contacts so of course in a real project i would rather use a view model store the state in there but since that's not really the point of this video um, and we only have that one single state in this composable i will just make use of remember together with a mutable state list of and this mutable state list will in this case just consist of some sample contacts um, so we can say we loop over the numbers from 1 to 100 and we map each number to a new contact UI item. The ID is simply our current number. The name is contact together with the current number and is options revealed is just false initially for all items. However, this right now, as you will notice, will make a list of a list of contact UI since it will take this whole list as a first element. Um, but we actually want to spread all these contacts here over this list. So what we can do is we can convert this to a typed array and then use this spread operator, um, which will do exactly that. So we get a list of contact UI elements. Then below, we can already start writing our lazy column where we say, okay, oops, um, the modifier is modifier the max size. And in here, um, we will have an items index block. We loop over all of our contacts. Um, so the items is contacts, where we also pass in keys. Um, oops. Key, I want this key lambda here, which gives me the index and the contact. And the key is simply um, the ID of each contact. And in here, um, we can then have our lambda also with our index and our current contact we're iterating over. So the keys here are used to just only recompose contacts that actually changed in this list. We can also get rid of this index here since that's not needed. And every single list item that we now have to put in here will just be a swipeable item with actions. Um, let's get rid of this lambda here, make this a bit more readable. So we have an actions lambda. Um, oh no, I actually think this is quite readable if the content lambda is at the end. Okay, so when is this item revealed? It is revealed when our contact is options revealed is true. For the actions, we now pass a lambda and in here, we have access to a row scope, so everything we put in here will be um, arranged in a row-like fashion. And here we can now put our action icons. So we have our first icon, whoops, the background color with the icon where the background color could be, I don't know, color.red. Let's make this our delete icon. So icons, default, delete, a little trash can. And we say the modifier is simply modifier fill max height. Um, let's first of all specify our different items here or icons in this row. We will have one for sending an email. Um, what is it? Send. Ah, that's a color. I am dumb. <laughs> icons default email. This one here, this could have the color of violet, um, purple. What is it called? Um, let's just use yellow, whatever. And let's make this one our share icon. And this can have the color of... Mm, Let's make this magenta. There's our purple. Okay, so what should happen when we click on one of these icons? When we click on this delete icon, then we want to look for the contact in our list here and simply delete it. So here, we will just um, take our contacts list or state and remove the current contact. In addition, we might also want to show a toast, pass in the context and say contact, contact.name was deleted toast.length. Let's use length short. And then we show this. We can copy this toast since we want to show this for each of these icons here and here. Here we can say was sent an email. And here we can say was shared. But in addition here, we also want to automatically hide this um, swipe context menu again when we clicked on one of these actions that aren't deleting this item because uh, then there is no item anymore. So in here, in addition to the toast, we also want to use our context list at the index of our current index. And we update this with our current contact dot copy and we change the is options revealed boolean to false. And once that switches to false here in our swipeable item with actions, this launch defect block will trigger because this is reveal changed. And since it's uh, changed to false, we will animate the offset back to zero. Back in our context screen, let's copy this line, paste it here for the share icon as well. And that's already everything for our icons. The last thing is putting the content here, which is really just a text, where we say contact um, and we pass in the index or so, or the contact ID, contact.id or so. We might also want to give this some padding modifier padding of 8dp. 
alt enter to import dp and that should already be everything for our contact screen so we now just need to take this composable call it here in our main activity and we're ready to try this out let's launch this take a look in here and hopefully this looks very comparable to what i showed you previously there we go we are launching the app and oh no that actually does not look as i showed you let's take a look in our swipeable item with actions and i think it's because i am not using fill max size here for our surface for our list item could that be the issue let's relaunch this ah yes it already switched here all right so that is fixed let's see if we can actually swipe and yes that is looking pretty good of course uh, the Icon colors are barely visible here on yellow, um, so normally I would, um, of course, choose a different icon color depending on the icon background. But if we now hit on Shear, we do see that the contact 6 was shared, but for some reason it is not hidden automatically. Let's investigate that for a moment. So here in our uh, contact screen, when we click on Shear, we actually switch this to false. So this is quite odd. So this code is definitely called because we do see the toast. We actually wanted to use the ID and not the name. So before it was saying contact, contact was shared. But that is not what will fix this issue. Let me quickly look into that and then I will get back to you. All right, I figured it out. It was quite a dumb issue um, because we, of course, defined this on expanded and on collapse lambda here for our swipeable item with actions, but we actually never even used that here in our items index block. So what we want to do is we want to refer to on expanded, uh, oops, like this. In here, we will now want to take our contact, um, this line here, and actually set the is options reveal to true because before we never switched it to true and therefore when we try to switching uh, to switching it to false that didn't cause a recomposition since it was already false same one to do for on collapsed where we pass the same and here we switch this to false if we relaunch this we take a look in here we share then now our item is actually automatically collapsed after we uh, programmatically change it. One more thing that I noticed, a little bug, if we delete an item, it is actually deleted. If we then try to swipe another item, then our app actually crashes. And if we take a look at Lockhead, um, the issue here seems to be related to our lazy column keys. And when I thought about this, um, it actually makes sense because using keys together with a mutable state list is pretty much pointless because with a mutable state list, the advantage is that we can just change a single item in the list without changing the other ones. So here we don't even need the keys in order to keep track of list changes. But if you would have a normal list in here, um, so not a mutable state list, but just a normal um, read-only list, and you would update that whole list every single time something changes, then you would need to use keys in order to only update and uh, recompose the item in the lazy column that actually changed. So if we now relaunch this one last time, we should be able to see that deleting now also works perfectly fine. Yes, and we go, we can click this, we click this, and everything seems to be just fine. And these contacts are properly deleted. Cool, I hope you enjoyed this. Thanks for watching. Down below, you will find a link to more advanced Android premium courses. So do check these out. And other than that, thanks so much for watching. I will see you back in the next video. Have an amazing rest of your week. Bye bye.